Did I hear that short, sharp lockdowns are the best way to handle this virus? I rather think than... you did. I think I heard it. And now, it's really important, I think, to hold them to account for the fact that they smashed, <laughs> politically speaking, uh, the, the kind of, you know, trigger-happy um, premiers that just loved going into lockdown really quickly. And now, you know, the numbers don't lie, right? <laughs> lockdowns, the point is you have to have one regardless with this strain, they've realised. Regardless. Yeah, you do. So you and, go and in and you have it quicker or do you have a long one like you're having in New South Wales and like we had in Victoria last year? And yeah. the, the, the science is clear. Yeah, and as we were just saying off air, I mean, the, the Delta variant is different. There's no doubt about it. We've all got to live and learn in a pandemic. Um, and so fair enough. The, the, the Prime Minister and the Treasurer have, have lived and learned to know that the Delta variant means short, sharp lockdowns are the way to deal with this, even though they resisted them for so long and gave the gold medal to Gladys Berejiklian for doing so as well. This is really, I think, the messaging coming from the Government and the Treasurer to try and stem the frustration in the community, get ready for short, sharp lockdowns Lockdowns up until we reach those vaccination targets. It's not just all about trying to divert attention from the, the chaos of the of the vaccine rollout in the past up until this moment. It's also about trying to tamp down the frustration in the community as community, different communities will go into short, sharp, hopefully very short, sharp lockdowns to deal with the Delta strain as we get these outbreaks until enough of us are vaccinated. Yeah, and it's worth mentioning before I just want to pivot quickly to another topic, which I think is important, but just it's worth mentioning we're recording this on a Thursday morning as we do, Fran and I hanging out at the same time every week. We love it. And, you know, Victoria is recording cases again of the virus, you know, right after sort of the, the one second it feels like or the very brief moment of sunshine of Donut Day, which we've got to look at Mother's Day, which we like to call it in the Greek community, the, the <laughs> sort of the yummier treat. Uh, but it just shows how short lived it is. The virus is just so super, you know, virulent. It's very hard to smash down. And so we just, it's just a whole different reality. You know, every time we get excited, we get put back in our corner. Hey, Fran, before we let our guest in, something significant has happened this morning, Thursday morning, and that's the Morrison government um, and the, the Prime Minister delivering this new closing the gap statement. It's now been recalibrated with new targets, with the peak Aboriginal health groups. It's a co-partnership led by Aboriginal people and the government together. Mm -hmm. And uh, they've delivered a, kind of lots of measures worth more than a billion dollars to reduce uh, disadvantage. Key in this announcement is a $378.6 million redress scheme for members of the Stolen Generations um, and as part of that implementation plan, I thought the Prime Minister's speech and actually Anthony Alban Albanese's speech were both quite powerful, strong speeches acknowledging the wrongs. But I've got to say, as somebody who has watched this area very closely for 20 years now, uh, you were saying off air, Fran, we were talking a bit off air, weren't we, uh, but before we started pressing the record button, that... When was the Bringing Them Home report? Well, was like, I mean, yeah. 24 years ago was that Bringing Them Home report, which was the Stolen Generation report. So, you know, my response to this money, which is federal funding for redress for Indigenous Australians from the Stolen Generation in, in the Territories only, in Northern Territory and the ACT, is at last. I mean, what took mm. you so long, really? Mm. But having said that... Indigenous leaders are happy with this $1 billion response. They think it's a, a good start. They're obviously happy with this redress money. And, and they are crediting Scott Morrison for, you know, reorienting the Close the Gap strategy, bringing the Indigenous organisations uh, closer into the process so they're really owning it and driving it. And they are, you know, appreciative of this billion-dollar injection. Yeah, that's right. And, and the Prime Minister, I've, got, I've spoken to many of the Aboriginal people involved who say to me, you know, on this one... He has been consultative and wanting a genuine partnership now, and I'm going to use the cliche, but, Fran, the proof will be in the pudding. Um, can they deliver? Can he deliver? We'll keep scrutinising it, both of us on our shows, watching it closely, and, and hopefully we can turn around some of these things, including the incarceration rate, which he said in his speech, you know, it's the justice systems are run by the states. But clearly the federal government needs to do some heavy lifting on this as well because you cannot have, uh, you know, young people in jail, uh, detention, really subjected to a lifetime of incarceration and intergenerational trauma that comes from mm. it. You can't, All but right. we do, and that's the problem we've got to change. <laughs> All right, let's bring in our guest, Fran. Let's do it. <laughs> Samantha Maiden, political editor at news.com.au. Welcome to the party room. 
Thanks for having me. Hi, Sam. Sam, we've been talking already about some of the pivots, backflips, whatever you want to call it, um, important ones made in the COVID messaging and policy direction this week. It's all very well, Sam, to talk the talk, but now the government and all of us really have to walk the walk. Do you think the message is now clear enough and is the rollout of the vaccines ramped up and ready to go in an effective way? Because, you know, no. it was bungled early <laughs> on in aged care. We all saw that. Has the general got things ready to roll? Uh, no, like, I mean, I think that it's still a, a big mess. And, 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 you know, I don't uh, resolve for a moment of the fact that this is hard, right, mm. and you can't expect it to be perfect, and that compared to a lot of other countries, Australia has had a golden run, right, uh, in terms of the number of deaths and the number of infections. We have been very lucky, right? Mm. Uh, but that has put us at a, a real uh, vulnerability in terms of these new variants turning up. We've got no real immunity in the community and we seem to have had this idea that we could sort of, uh, you know, the, the vaccine stroll out idea. Um, and, and, you know, like even today, I've been writing a story about um, communities in the central coast of New South Wales that have literally got uh, text messages at the weekend cancelling their appointments mm. of Pfizer and, and AstraZeneca, I think mainly Pfizer, um, and basically told, oh, no, we need those vaccines for the Year 12 students in Sydney, yeah. right? And part of them has been like, okay, fair enough, you know, they're trying to all be in it together. But now they, there's just white-hot anger in the community because now they have an outbreak. They were always pretty close to areas with outbreaks. They have two close, two schools that have shut down for deep cleaning and they've had their, their vaccine appointments cancelled. Now, the Prime Minister has stepped in, uh, you know, on Thursday to basically give another nearly 200,000 doses to New South Wales, bringing forward uh, stuff that they were going to get in September. And uh, he's told news.com.au that uh, a condition... OK, um, stop there. Oh, what, did I, what happened? Anyway, I stopped it. I don't know what <coughs> some numbers are going. Uh, weird, weird, weird. <laughs> Crazy. Because, love you, because, love you. Okay. <laughs> Lick you out. Ah, no, Hector's shaking his head. Hector's shaking his head. No, all I'm going to say is they say about um that Sydney or some places where schools were shut down and they missed out on the, on the vaccine and others did not want to get the vaccine. So Mr. Scott Morris has to put the foot down and say, look, you're going to get the vaccine and you're going to get it, right? You're going to get the vaccine and you're going to get it. You better have a good shot, man. You better have a good shot, man. If you don't, you don't get a good shot. All right, it's all the government, us, we're all together. We are doing something special. We're here for you to love and we're here for you to care. We're here in the community of Illawarra, Wollongong, One Door Mental Health and all this stuff. And we are... In Canberra, my mum lives in the capital, Canberra, and it's very cold there, and the vaccines are rolled out, rolling out. Um, debate, 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 because, because, because. Okay, I was going to change it now, and please, excuse me, please, excuse me, please. Be nice, and opinions, please, opinion, please. Because, thank you, reply, please. <coughs> You're listening to SBS News. Ravindri Gunavardhana knew from a young age that she'd go to university in Australia. When I was in grade 9, 10, I always wanted to do my um, studies, um, higher studies abroad. And um, I re remember coming to Australia for the first time in 2017 with my family. And then I just loved the country. And, and I, by that time, I had already heard so much about the Australian education system. The IT student enrolled at Western Okay, I'd like to say, me too, I fell in love with the country, our family did that, we cried, we cried and cried and cried, let it all out Hector, let it all out family Hector, you're in a beautiful country, let it all out, cry, cry, cry baby, poor Hector, he loves Australia, doesn't love Chile anymore, Australia, 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 Centrelink, Centrelink, Hector, Hector, idiot, Hector, idiot, your mother has gone back to Chile, Hector, and she said it's beautiful there. It's got beautiful surrounding, beautiful mountains, beautiful animals, beautiful people, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Hector, Australia is not just the one. You have two countries to go to, Chile and Australia. Remember that. 
Australia is an accommodation place where you made yourself at home, you became a citizen. Been living here for 34 years. I'm Chilean and I live in the Illawarra in Toraji and I love it and I love it because 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 I love the sport people. I love the people walking the dogs. I love everything. I walk outside right now and okay, I just looked at the window about six minutes ago. I see a lady walking up the dog with the husband talking. All right. Uh, if that's not a good thing, what what is exercise? What is exercise? What is the customs and tradition? Who are you? Who are you? Because, 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 reply, thank you, I love you. Thank you, please. And then I just love the country. And, and I, by that time, I had already heard so much about the Australian education system. The IT student enrolled at Western Sydney University in Parramatta and came to Australia at the start of 2020, just before the borders closed. But many of her friends who she had planned to study with together in Australia remained stranded in her home country of Sri Lanka. Some of them have um, already started their courses online but they're just hoping that the borders are open again so they can come here as soon as possible and um, others I guess some of them have changed their mind and they've just started doing courses back home. It's a story that's become far too common as Australia's international education system has been decimated by the pandemic-driven border closures. The hospitality sector is also buckling under the pressure. The Kitchen of Tonka in Melbourne CBD is known for its upmarket Indian dishes brought together by a team of 15 kitchen staff, more than half of whom are visa holders. But it's professions like these that Australia is is currently in dire need of amid a chronic shortage of skilled workers fueled by a lack of migration since borders shut in March last year. Tonka's co-owner Adam De Silva says skilled workers are the backbone of industries like his. We support them, we just need the borders open to allow people to come and, you know, keep on feeding that cycle of, of staff. Demographers say Australia hasn't seen the current net zero migration level since just after the Second World War. Dr Thomas Wilson is a demographer at the University of Melbourne. Even the recessions in the 90s, we had low migration, but we still had net migration gains. So this is very, very unusual for Australia. It's a unique uh, event. This is a country built on immigration. It's very used to quite high migration flows. Uh, we generally have 200,000 to 300,000 net overseas migration uh, growth each year. While Australia may be less statistically diverse than previous years, Dr Wilson says our diversity is not under threat. We're probably going to have a small decrease in the proportion of the overseas born over the next couple of years, but that's likely to bounce back again as overseas migration resumes. Experts say Australia's population growth is at its lowest in a century. Gabriella D'Souza says Australia will have a net overseas migration rate of minus 72,000 for this year. And some of those population growth numbers that we had in the July economic fiscal update were at about 0 0.6 uh, for population growth. Um, we're now looking at 0 0.1 as per the budget um, update. So that's very, very low. She says while the impacts of Australia's net zero migration is already being felt across key sectors, it could just be a small indication of the real size of the issue. We know that migration is pro-cyclical. So when the economy is doing well, we'll see a lot of migration. When it's not doing so well, we probably weren't um, but you know this is this is going to be a huge problem for us to solve in the future. It's not the first time the national census has been held in a global pandemic. The survey was also conducted as the country was recovering from the Spanish flu. But experts say the results gathered from this year's census will be crucial in tracking changing migration patterns and taking a snapshot of the current population. They're asking everyone to take part and ensure their communities are represented in the next results. Hashayla Kumara Wansa, SBS News. to SBS On The Money with Ricardo Gonsalves. Hi everyone, it's your daily business and finance news wrap for this Wednesday, the 4th of August 2021. The Australian share market closed at yet another record high today. The S&P ASX 200 up by a little over a third. I'd like to say this is the second recording. This is the market record ahead of a profit.
uh, reporting season. Okay, uh, this is the market reporting, and um, <clears throat> I just like you say, uh, we're not doing very well. <clears throat> Oops, sorry, excuse me. Uh, we have shops that are shut. We have people that need to go back to work, and this is disgusting. It's very, very disgusting. You know that because, because, because. Reply, listen, and reply. We need Nara, and we need surrounding areas, all of it, to be open again and again and again. We need to go out in the community to supply our um, self knowledge, our self um, employment, our self. Um, mindfulness ourselves good people to do what we used to do and what we went to do how we're doing it in seeing love of the family of different buildings in the Illawarra and surrounding this as well my mother lives in Canberra which is three hours away uh, um, my surrounding here in the Illawarra is called the ocean all around it and we are very very lucky in the Illawarra to have the ocean it's a good place to visit and it's very, very, very unique. But now the shops are shut. Um, they're making new vaccines where you can have your vaccine shot in Wollongong. And it's going to take another 21 more days. You understand? 21 more days to get a result from now. So if you're desperate, please, 21 more days, please, please, please. Because, because, because. Thank you. Thank you very, very much. <laughs> anyway. Um, China not, not seem to be listening and technology is going up the hay hole and all the ladies who are in the Olympics now, the Olympics is on, uh, we're winning good gold medals, I'm watching it all the time, I'm inside of my house, I go out when I need to, I do things when I need to, I still haven't got my vaccine shot yet, yeah. my friend Ben, one of the workers from Wanda Wollongong, has got his shot, he says nothing to it, don't be shy, don't be afraid, don't let the cat Get your tongue, debate, opinions, please. I love you. I love you. Very nice, please. The 4th of August 2021, the Australian chairman... Because I love you. ...closed at yet another record high today. The S&P ASX 200 up by a little over a third of a percent. The Commonwealth Bank rose today. It reports next week. Bunnings owner West Farmers hit a record high, but the biggest gains came from the miners, including BHP, which also hit fresh levels. For more, I spoke earlier with Francesco De Stratus from Ordminet. Francesco, the 200 hit another record today during the day. Where's the positive sentiment coming from? Yeah, look, well, we've got a solid lead out of the US, so that's always going to be positive into the open. Uh, open strong where it fell away and now it's starting to pour its way back. Look, most sectors are positive, uh, being led mainly by the uh, resources, the energy stocks and utilities. Uh, detracting a little bit from this is the healthcare and industrial, so CSL's off a bit today. Uh, there's a broker report out that um, you know, plasma, uh, plasma collections are going to be down a bit. Obviously, that's COVID-related. Uh, and transport stocks in the industrials are down a bit, um, probably st you know, obviously relating to the, the COVID and the Delta strain, um, and, and more concerns locally than than, than internationally, I would suggest. Um, reporting season's underway. Um, there's a few companies that are reporting. We'll get uh, right into it next week, and then the following week there'll be a raft of uh, results out. But so far we've seen Rio report. Um, look, the results were slightly ahead of broker expectations, but very, very strong compared to previous year. Uh, dividend growth was significantly strong as well. Uh, today, GED put out their results as well. Solid result, but no guidance. Uh, their stock's off about 3%. So, so I think uh, a lot of it's uh, being driven by the resources sector um, and expectations of, of solid dividends there. Speaking of profit reporting season, as you mentioned, it's just started. What are you expecting from it? What are the themes? Yeah, look, at all, we're, we're expecting a fairly solid reporting season, um, probably better than previous years. Um, you know, and, and really with the backdrop of COVID, it's, it's very surprising. Um, we expect earnings uh, trends to remain strong, um, dividend. Okay, I'd like to say that Australia did spend a lot of money to get this vaccine rollout. Australia did spend a lot of money to unemployment people. Australia did spend a lot of money also in other sectors, in other places. Uh, I like to say the government of Australia are um, very, very uh, silly, very, very stupid, but we have to compare 
China, America, and many other countries to help. Or we help them, or they help us. We, we were advancing, making good progress. Australia has to become a marketplace for different oil, um, copper um, mining companies, and also the rich people who are in casinos, big buildings, and also the mental health issues that we have in the Illawarra, New South Wales, Australia. And I would like to say in that respect, we are all in with that together. And well said, well said, very nice, beautiful. I love you. That is very, very good. Thank you, Hector. You are a very nice person, please. Be nice, please. Thank you. I love you, family. Illawarra, New South Wales, Australia. I'm crying now. Yes. Um, you know, and, and really, with the backdrop of COVID, it's, it's very surprising. Um, we expect earnings uh, trends to remain strong, uh, dividend projections uh, to uh, see them start to recover. We saw a lot of companies last year uh, cut dividends and even, even not pay dividends, and we'll start to see that come back. As uh, the re- I also like to say, I hope Woolies, Woolworth, Woolworth, Aldi, Coles, or even supermarket, every place where we can go, um, yes, and the um, Olympic Games, okay, or sport or family or anything that is f- for you to go and see, do what can, whatever, do what you can and what you can to do, you understand? Go out in the community, you lazy, you lazy rat bag. <laughs> nah, I love you. Oh, oh my God, oh my God, I'm right on the page now. Oops. Oops, sorry, family, 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 because, because, because I love you. And remember, Hector is a champion when you see hector always upbeat something here something there that is beautiful people will like that people like a champion not a not a cat got your tongue little coward no way champion 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 hector in the illawarra needs as well australia illawarra needs as well australia it's a beautiful beautiful surrounding with many things, Australia's got beautiful places to visit. Australia's beautiful. The market needs to go up and needs to grow for to have more uh, employment, more money in the sectors. Uh, our Prime Minister Scott Morris, that's his name, in Canberra, he's debating many things. They getting angry with him with many things. He's disgusting China, disgusting China. Stop it now, China, please. And the Philippines and other places. We love you. We love you, Germany. We love you, England. We love you, America. We love you, China. We love you all. We love you. Love, la, 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 la. Didi, bye. I love you. Family matters. Family matters. Workers, go back to work. Workers need to go back to work and say, thank you. You did good job, workers. Thank you, Hector. Be nice. Champion. I love you to uh, see them start to recover. We saw a lot of companies last year uh, cut dividends and even even not pay dividends, and we'll start to see that come back as uh, the realisation that earnings um, weren't uh, cut as hard as they could have been. Um, and I think, uh, uh, you know, a bit of guidance, you know, all the lack of guidance, and that's all related to the COVID and the Delta strain, um, it is hard for some companies to put out guidance if they're uncertain what the economic backdrop backdrop's going to look like. Um, but I think a big theme there is M&A activity. Um, you know, we're into full swing. You know, All Search and, uh, and Santos uh, proposed a merger this uh, this week or increased their merger proposal. Um, and then, you know, there's a bit of demerger activity as well. We, we so recently said Woolies and Endeavour Drinks, uh, AGL are, are uh, talking, talking about their demerger. Um, and there is a bit of speculation around that BHP might demerge their oil and gas division. And speaking of mergers, we can't go past that huge takeover of Afterpay, $39 billion from Square in the US, the biggest in Australia ever. Is there still a bit of a hangover in the market from it? Uh, look, I think there is a little bit. Um, obviously, um, you know, Afterpay share price is now being driven by the share price of Squares. Um, it, it will list here in Australia um, once the deal has been finalised. Um, but, yeah, look, I, I think there are a number of uh, investors out there that are uh, trying to identify the next potential acquisition in, in, in the, uh, uh, the technology sector. Um, look, there's a lot of new technology stocks in, in our market at the moment. Um, some good, not some not so good. 
And I think investors are out there just trying to pick through the teeth of that and identify which ones are going to be the next targets. That is SBS on the money for this Tuesday. Don't forget you can listen to this as a stream on the SBS radio app, Spotify and Apple Podcasts. ABC News. Hello, Amber Jacobs with the latest headlines. 180,000 extra doses of Pfizer are expected to arrive in New South Wales over the next fortnight as Year 12 students return to -to face-to-face learning. The Premier has promised the extra doses will be directed to the regions and key local government areas of concern in Greater Sydney. New South Wales today recorded 262 new infections. Newcastle and the Hunter region are entering a snap lockdown this afternoon as COVID case numbers grow in those areas. Victoria announced six new local cases this morning and two more later in the day. South Australia has tweaked its border restrictions with Victoria. From midnight, people from Western Victoria will be able to enter SA without quarantining, but they'll be tested for COVID on days 1, 5 and 13. The federal government has defended its decision not to include the descendants of the stolen generation survivors in a new redress program. The Commonwealth has committed $380 million to fund the scheme for survivors in the Northern Territory and the ACT. Overseas now, a fast-moving bushfire in the U.S. state of California has engulfed the small town of Greenville, destroying several homes. And Russian authorities have blocked two online news outlets critical of the Kremlin in the lead-up to the parliamentary election next month. ABC News. ABC News. Hello, Amber Jacobs with the latest headlines. New South Wales has recorded another five COVID-related deaths, taking the number of... ABC News. The government is sending nearly one outbreak to 21. It comes as the state recorded 262 new cases of COVID-19. Premier Gladys Berejiklian says four survivors announced today is the end of a long battle for recognition. Survivors in the NT, ACT and Jervis Bay Territory will receive more than $80,000 each to promote well-being and healing of survivors. And the Mexican government is suing major US gun companies, accusing them of failing to stop the illegal flow of weapons across the border. The lawsuit has been filed in the US against 15 companies, including Smith & Wesson and Colts Manufacturing Company. ABC News. Okay, I'm stopping it now. <clears throat> How do I stop it? How do I stop it? <laughs> whoa, 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 this is silly. Okay. <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna stop it now. Um I'm 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 embarrassed, I'm embarrassed, I'm embarrassed. Oh hey ho oh, hey ho oh, ho oh, hey ho oh, oh, ho oh, oh. ho Okay, twenty one days we gotta wait. Um that's in three weeks. Um at the middle of um next month. What are we on? August. At the end of this month. <laughs> Near the end, very close to the end, 20, on the 20th of August or something. We should know the result if we're allowed to go out and do this, to, uh, uh, not wear a mask and all this stuff. Debate, leave your opinions, say something. Uh, 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 subscribe, I mean, um, put your um, storyline down the bottom and say something. <laughs> this is incredible. I, I, I'm out. I, I, Anyway, I, I can't explain it. I'm I'm all red now on the face, mate. <laughs> my God, my God. Because because opinion, reply, subscribe, whatever it is. <laughs> I love you, and you'll never get another one just like me. Champion, you gotta be out and about. Don't be lazy. Don't be scary little cat. Cat caught your tongue, is it? Don't do that. Your family, 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 people who work in the community need to be thank, thank, thank. And I love you. I love you. I'm cutting it out now. Goodbye. Uh, have fun. Enjoy opinions. Leave your story, please. I love you. I love you. I love you more than ever. Hugs, 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 hugs. Family, family, family. Work is work is. Go back to work. Buildings that need work. This that need work. That need work. Shops can be shut. This is sad. I love you. Opinion, opinion. Um, debate opinion because 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 family love you.